All right, this morning's job is to pull this blower wheel that I found to be pretty dirty. Last time I did a maintenance on this system, which is just a little while back. Just now kind of getting around to coming back. And so before cooling season starts, we're gonna pull this blower wheel out. We're gonna give it a good cleaning. I'm also gonna throw in an indoor coil cleaning. It doesn't look too bad. Of course, this is the leading side of it. But while I've got the blower pulled out, it's an excellent time to do a coil cleaning so you have full access. And I'm also going to replace that capacitor that's way back there that's really hard to test and do any kind of service on without removing the blower. So if we're going to pull the blower wheel out, we're going to go ahead and replace that capacitor. Of course, disconnect is pulled out. And then we're going to unwire it. So it looks like they're using the black wire on the fan relay. That is the high speed wire. So we're going to take that loose. These other two terminals here, M1 and M2, are just landing points for the other blower speeds so that they don't short out against anything. They don't actually do anything. These terminals are pretty, pretty much dead. Once you get the screws that hold the blower assembly in its track, then it will just slide on out. So while the blower assembly is out, I am gonna go ahead and take a rag with some cleaner and we're gonna clean the inside of this cabinet here because you can't get access to this without the blower taken out and i'm going to give a quick inspection to the heat strip coil as well looks like that's intact we are here in a very warm climate these heat strips don't get a lot of action and so when they do fire up a lot of times a little smoke will come out of the ducts it might trip a smoke alarm it'll freak out the occupant sometimes on a pm i like to go ahead and jump them out and just fire them up in a controlled situation that way it doesn't do it as a surprise to the occupant later on all right here at the truck as you can see blower wheel does have a pretty decent layer of debris on it and whenever we have even just a little thin layer of dust on there that really does affect how much airflow this blower can move it also makes any static pressure reading that you take inaccurate because this blower is not producing the pressure externally to the air handler that it should be because it's not being able to scoop and throw the air properly all right gotta take the ground screw loose hang on to that and then we're going to unwire everything else again just paying attention brown wire goes by itself the purple and the pink go together then we got to take these three screws loose on the motor mount next before you take everything loose you do want to pay attention to whether or not these wires right here point towards the throat or another direction on the blower that way when you put this back all the wires reach and you're putting things exactly back the way they came out Next thing we're going to do is take some plumber's roll or sandpaper and we're going to sand down all the rust and make this shaft really smooth so that the motor slides out really easy. Next thing you're going to do is break loose the set screw. When the set screw came loose, this blower wheel actually dropped on the shaft, which is a good thing because now I can access part of the shaft with my sandpaper that was previously covered up by the blower wheel hub. Finally, a little bit of penetrating oil. I also like to spray some in where the key goes. I also like to spray some in where the set screw goes. And we're ready to see whether this thing spins on the blower wheel. Oh yeah, we're gonna have no problem pulling this out. The motor slid out very, very easy. Prep work is key here, making sure that you sand the shaft, you use good penetrating oil, you try to access all areas with the penetrating oil, you work it loose, you give it some time for the penetrating oil to do its thing, don't get in too big of a hurry, and nine times out of ten, you're gonna have very little trouble with these. I did wanna say that if you do ever have trouble taking the blower wheel apart from the shaft, the first thing that I do after I put a whole bunch of penetrating oil and clean up the shaft is I'm going to hold the blower wheel with one hand. Obviously you want to wear gloves when you do this because there's some sharp edges. You're going to take an adjustable wrench on the other side and line up that flat spot so your wrench kind of locks on there and you're just going to try to break it loose, twist it loose from the hub. You'll find that if you can do that first then it's just a matter of cleaning the shaft up a little bit better, getting some more penetrating oil and it does come out. If you still have trouble they do make hub pullers. I carry one in the truck but I have not had to use one in a very long time because I do so much prep work before I even try to pull the motor off the hub. 
All right, we're gonna mix a little bit of Viper evaporator cleaner into this pump up sprayer. That's what we're gonna be using to clean this blower wheel as well as the indoor coil. I can get this Viper coil cleaner in a lot of places, but where I picked it up today was a Brunswick Supply House here on Oak Island. Brunswick is a great supporter of my channel. I appreciate everything they do. And their supply house actually sells nationwide. They just happen to be in my backyard here in Brunswick County, North Carolina. Well, we've washed the coil with coil cleaner, we've rinsed it, now it's time to let it drip dry and put everything back together. All right, motor is mounted, got a new capacitor wired up, got my ground wire on there, here's the old capacitor, uh, and I got everything wiped down right here with the rag. You want to make sure that these wires are clean, they had some biological growth on them, and you know, all this stuff is in the airstream, so why you got to pull it out, go ahead and do a good job. Now we need to secure the blower wheel onto the housing. And in order to do that, we need to make sure that it is centered in the housing. It's not going to scrape on one side or the other. It's centered on there. And the other thing that you need to do is make sure that the flat spot lines up with your set screw hole. Finally, give it a good spin, especially in the direction that it's going to be turning when the motor comes on. Make sure everything feels smooth and there's no noise. All right, everything's wiped down, coil is cleaned. The last thing I'm gonna do is take some of the Viper pan and drain treatment, and I'm actually gonna spray it right on the coil itself. This is gonna work its way into the drain pan, and it's gonna help the system not only drain better, but it's going to destroy some of the biologicals in there that cause drains to stop up. So between cleaning the coil with a coil cleaner, that has a biocide, that's what the Viper evaporator coal cleaner has. It's got enzymes that kill living things that turn into crud that we don't want to breathe, as well as this pan treatment and applying that to the drain pan, the evaporator coal, the drain, cleaning the cabinet, cleaning the blower assembly. We have given this customer a really good chance of not having uh, weird smells, dirty sock syndrome, and other indoor air quality issues just by keeping the system clean. I just realized that it looks like that I missed a few spots right there. When you get really, really close, you're going to see that's actually spots where the silver of the FSK uh, liner has been rubbed. And uh, it looks dirty, but it's not dirty. It's actually just a, sort of abraded. It's scuffed up really bad. Everything is installed, and we're just going to make sure that everything is wired correctly. And we're going to turn the system on. We're going to put it through its paces. We're going to check performance next. So the question is, why did the blower wheel get dirty if we have an air filter? Well, there could be a several reasons. Could have an air filter that doesn't get changed often enough. But even stuff like this, grommets that aren't seated correctly, this is air that is coming in after the filter. Like if you have doors that don't seal correctly, if you have especially a uh, unused filter panel right here because the filter's in the grill above that isn't sealed correctly return duct leaks all these things happen after the filter and they will accumulate to dust building up on the coil and the blower and other components in the air handler so whenever you find a dirty blower wheel you've got to ask yourself why i've given them some options on what to do next on this unit we'll see what they do